Canada the Beautiful. It's being sold to everybody around the world that this place is a place to raise a family, be safe, and live an amazing life. But if that's the case, why are so many people leaving in droves who just got here? It seems like the jig is up. It seems like these new immigrants have figured out that Canada is pretty broken. But how did this happen? How did this come to be and why exactly are so many people leaving and how does that affect you as a Canadian? Let's get into it. Now, you may have seen all the articles, but Canada is one of the top nations on the planet that has the highest rate of reverse immigration, not something we really want to be top of the list of. Now, for a great G7 country to have a great quality of life, so they're saying, to have all these immigrants come here, land here, get into their jobs, move into a house, rent a house, whatever, get into the culture and into the economy only to leave four, five, six months, 12 months later, that's a really bad sign. But it's happening more and more and it's catching the eyes of more and more media stations, even left-wing media stations. Now that's how you know things are getting fucking bad. Now it's one thing from someone from India or China to come to this economy, start working in a job and then leave because they miss their family or they just miss their own home. But when you have Ukrainian refugees who were brought here for free and are now leaving because the cost of life is way too high, it's too hard to get ahead, they can't get integrated in the job sector fast enough to make enough money to support themselves that they would rather go back to war-torn Ukraine where they could literally get blown up at any minute because they can't live here. They can't integrate themselves here. They have to go back to Ukraine. That is pretty sad and pretty fucked up but also pretty funny on Trudeau's part in some aspect. I mean, how bad of a prime minister do you have to be that war refugees are going back to war-torn country because they just don't want to live here? Now, the liberal government's catching on, Trudeau's catching on, and they're limiting and banning student visas for 2024. They're only allowing 360,000 student visas, which is down 35% from 2023. So, you know, they're catching on, but is it a little too late? It's definitely too late. It's not like you can just deport people that have come here to go back. You can't do that. Once they're here, they're here, but at least they're starting to limit it going forward. Now, this is just boosting the nationalist people in Canada going, yeah, go back to your country. This move, <laughs> they're all over this move. But as I always say, immigration to our country is good in some aspect. But just like anything, too much of anything can be bad. Immigration is good for our GDP. It brings money to the country. It brings investment. It forces builders to build more homes, build more businesses, build more buildings. It's good. You need immigration. America was totally founded on immigration. Without immigration, the US wouldn't be the superpower they are today. And the same kind of goes for Canada. But we've just had too fucking much way too fast. And it's not even that we've had too much. Our country's gigantic. The problem is we haven't had enough housing to support the crazy influx of people. If we had the housing infrastructure, if we had enough homes, it wouldn't be a problem. We just don't have enough homes. And that's what's making rent and house prices and mortgages through the roof, especially for Canadians who are living here. And now with this news breaking of reverse immigration, you got TikTokers left, right, and center exposing the Canadian dream, myself included. I wouldn't consider myself a TikToker because I'm a real entrepreneur with a real business, but I am on TikTok. Now, it's also being exposed that immigration is basically like a pyramid scheme. See, you have immigration agents trying to sell students and other people, yeah, yeah, come to Canada. It's a great country. Sign up to Conestation. Stoga College in Kitchener, Ontario. You're going to have a great life with that one. Come on over. Come on over to Brock University. It's great. It's great. I mean, they're selling and peddling and pushing because they're getting a cut off of it. It's part of their job. But they're selling a little too fucking hard because we have dozens and hundreds of accounts from people who said, yeah, dude, the immigration agent totally lied. They said everything was affordable, food is cheap, it's safe, which yeah, our country is safe, I'll give them that. You know, housing is affordable, renting a house, oh yeah, yeah, so easy, you'll find a great house in a great city, yeah, 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 just come to Canada, it's great. And when they get here, they figure out that was all a friggin' lie. But when you fly halfway across the world, bring everything you have on your back, leave everybody behind, bring all your money over, you can't just kinda go back the next day, you got to kind of work yourself up, save a budget to go back again. Not to mention schools like Conestoga College and other universities are now getting exposed for charging double, even triple the tuition to international students. See, when you're a Canadian citizen born here and when you go to a college, a good amount of your schooling is 
paid for by the government. So you pay a cheaper tuition for being a Canadian. But when you're an international student, no, no, no. You don't get that Ontario bonus or the Canadian bonus. You got to pay full price, which is double, sometimes triple the tuition a Canadian would pay. So there's no reason why Consular College had record breakout profits in the year 2023, a down year after the pandemic when less people are going physically to school or going to college these days regardless how the fuck did they have a record breakout profit give me a break dude it's because they're getting all these immigrants to pay double or triple the tuition pocketing all that sweet sweet cash well that's all being exposed now we'll see if it continues and it's going to continue because it's a corporation and the government's not going to do shit so let the profits print baby Now, when you think about it, Canada is barely livable for Canadian citizens who work a full-time job, make the average income of 40, 45,000. So the household income is around $90,000. And people still can't make ends meet with their car, their car payments, insurance, their mortgage or their rent, food, clothes, kids. Kids are so expensive, man. So Canadian citizens with decent jobs can barely afford it. How the fuck is a student gonna afford it when they get here. I mean, they're working some part-time job at fucking Burger King, trying to get a good standing education from Conestoga College. I keep ripping on Conestoga College, which is like five minutes from my house, actually. But yo, that school is garbage. And getting into Canada is not as easy as it seems for immigrants. Immigration agencies can charge up to $50,000 to expedite or get someone in quickly into a good placement. And for students, they only have to show that they have $10,000 Canadian in their account, even though tuition is like twelve to 15000 for the average school. So they don't have to show any money for housing, for food, no, no, no. Just barely enough for the one-year tuition. That's good enough, come on in. Now, if you're not a student, it's not that easy. You gotta pay, like I said, upwards to $50,000 to bypass or get your way in quickly. So all of this, all of this money scrounging, selling your house from whatever country you're in, cashing out all your assets just to get here and barely survive like the rest of us, That's terrible. So what does this mean for you? This channel is all about solutions, how to grow your wealth, how to invest in real estate and stocks, whatever. Just how to get ahead in life. Well, the reality is the damage is already done and there's really no way to reverse it. I mean, Pierre Polyev might come in and might tighten things up, might cancel things, might ax the carbon tax, all these great things that, you know, it's better than nothing. It sounds good as well. I'll morally feel better about my life if Pierre Polyev is prime minister, but is it really going to affect my personal wallet or yours? As I always say, no. It doesn't matter if Trudeau is in. It doesn't matter if Pierre Polyev is in. It doesn't matter if Maxime Bernier somehow wins and gets in. Dude, which is not, which is not going to win. But anyway, you can't rely on politicians or anybody else to change your life and make your life better. That all comes down to you. And the best way to truly have more control over your life, have more freedom, is to have money, baby. You gotta be wealthy. Money talks, bullshit walks. All the commenters in all these videos calling me a rich asshole and get out of here, millionaire, fucking broke basement boys. They ain't going fucking nowhere. Those comments mean nothing to me. Who cares about those types of people? I hope you're not one of them watching this. I hope you're an A player trying to figure out how to get ahead in life and there's no better way than investing in my favorite being investing in real estate. Why? Real estate ain't going anywhere, dude. Real estate is always gonna be a need. Everybody's always gonna need a roof over their head, a great place to stay. So if you can be a provider of such houses, i.e. a landlord, you're gonna be very, very wealthy over time. And if you want true freedom, like I said, especially, which is what this is all about, the whole money game for me, growing my businesses, buying more real estate now in the US because fuck Canada, is all about giving me what I really want, which is freedom. Right now, I'm sitting in my garage with this green screen in Florida. This is our Florida house. We rent it out for most of the year. And during the winter months, the most important months, we live here chilling out by the pool enjoying some palm trees and mangoes. And when we go back home to Canada for the summers, we enjoy our luxury masterpiece of a house. A lot of people would call that house a dream house for Canada. And in the fall, we always go to Europe for a couple of weeks, two, three weeks. And then the later months of December, we usually go somewhere cool, Costa Rica. And then the cycle repeats. The only way I can do that 
is by living by my own rules, by building a business that I can run remotely and my business happens to be a real estate investing, which is a fucking fantastic business. So if you want to learn more about that, how to build a business, how to invest in real estate, dude, my whole channel is all about that. Check out all the videos. I got like over 500 videos teaching you how to be a savage real estate investor. So subscribe, hit the like button. I will see you in the next video.